Hey everyone, Ricardo here. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how ground distance protection works and how to implement a ground distance protection scheme using the SEL 411L relay. Now in a previous video, I talked about a distance protection in general, focusing on phase MO elements. So if you haven't watched that video, make sure to check it out first. It's this video over here, and I'll also leave a link to it in the description below. Now in that video, I talked about phase distance elements, but in this video, I'm gonna be focusing on ground distance elements. That is protection elements that respond to single phase to ground faults. Now to illustrate this, I've created an ETAP model of a 230 kV transmission system, and we're gonna be developing the ground distance protection for a 230 kV transmission line using an SEL 411L relay. All right, so let's jump right into it. Let's take a look at the 230 kV transmission line example for which we're gonna be developing our settings. All right, so what I have over here is an example 230 kV transmission system with parallel transmission lines between two substations. Now here we're gonna be implementing the Mo ground distance element using an SEL 411L relay, which is this one that I have over here on the top left terminal. Now for this example, I'm gonna be setting the zone one Mo ground distance element to protect the first 80% of the transmission line. And this is of course from the point of view of the relay, so looking this way. And the zone two Mo ground distance element with a reach of 120% of the transmission line so that we have, of course, some margin and ensure that we cover the entire transmission line. Now I'll set the zone two element with a delay of 30 cycles to coordinate with any protection at the remote substation. And again, I talked about the reason why we need to set the zone one element to underreach the end of the transmission line and the zone two element to overreach the end of the transmission line in a previous video. So make sure to check out that video as well before you watch this video. Now the key point that I wanna make in this video is that we're gonna be setting our zone one and our zone two elements to 80% and 120% of the positive sequence transmission line impedance. Now the issue here though is that we want our ground distance protection to respond to ground faults where we're gonna have zero sequence current flow. So we need to have a way to compensate for using the positive sequence impedance for our settings while we want our element to respond to ground faults. Now to do this, the SCL 411L and most modern relays use what's called a zero sequence compensation factor so that we can set our elements using the positive sequence impedance of the transmission line, but have it respond to ground faults. Essentially, even though we're using the positive sequence transmission line impedance, by using this zero sequence compensation factor, they really account for the zero sequence current flow for ground faults. All right, so let's jump back into the model and let's see how we can calculate both the reaches of the zone one and the zone two elements, as well as the zero sequence compensation factor. Now for this example, if we take a look at the transmission lines impedances, so if I open this transmission line and go to impedance, we can see here that the zero sequence impedance, this one over here, is larger than the positive sequence impedance, which is over here. But of course that changes based on the construction of the transmission line itself. All right, so we know that we need to calculate the reaches in terms of the positive sequence impedance. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna be using this number over here for the positive sequence impedance. So if I go over here to my notebook and I'm just gonna write down those values. So I'm gonna say Z1 is the positive sequence impedance. That number was 0.6. 9806 plus J 4.212.57. And this is of course ohms. And so if I convert this to polar form, I get that this is equal to 4.270 at an angle of 80.591 degrees. And again, this is in ohms. Now this number, when I say that it's in ohms, I mean that it's the primary impedance. It's not what the relay is gonna see because we're feeding current and voltage to the relay via current transformers and voltage transformers. So we need to convert this to secondary values. And to do that, we can simply multiply times the CT ratio. So in our example, the CT ratio is 2000 to five, that gives us 400. And the PT ratio is 230 kV, so 230,000 by 115, divided by 115. So that's equal to 2000. So again, to convert from primary terms to secondary terms, we can simply take the number 4.27, and here I'm just gonna do the magnitude, times the CT ratio divided by the PT ratio, and that gives me 0.854 at an angle of 
0.591. So of course the angle doesn't change. So this is the impedance, positive sequence impedance in secondary terms. Now we can do the same thing while we're at it for the zero sequence impedance. And we're going to need this for the zero sequence compensation factor, which we'll see here in a second. But the zero sequence impedance, I'm going to call that Z0. And that number was 2.04572 plus J 12.8622. And if I convert this to polar form, I get that this is equal to 13.024 angle 80.9. 963 and this again is in primary ohms and again this number is simply straight from the etop model so that's the zero sequence impedance for the transmission line now to convert this to secondary terms we can do the same thing we're going to multiply times the ct ratio and divide by the pt ratio so if i do that i get that this is equal to 2.605 and of course the angle remains the same so 80.963 and this is ohms secondary. All right, so now let's calculate the reaches of the mole ground distance element. And again, we're gonna use the positive sequence impedance. This is what's a little bit counterintuitive because we're using a ground element, yet we're using the positive sequence impedance, which of course we correlate that to phase quantities, not ground quantities. So we're gonna calculate the reaches based on the positive sequence impedance, but then we're gonna use the zero sequence compensation factor so that we can compensate for using the positive sequence impedance for a ground element. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We said that, and I'm gonna use a different color here. We said that we want our zone one, and I'm gonna call this Z1MG. We want that to be 0 0.8, so 80%, of the positive sequence impedance of the transmission line, which again is over here, 0.854. So 0 0.8 times 0 0.854, that gives me that the reach of the zone one ground distance element is gonna be 0 0.68. And this again is ohms secondary. And here I'm rounding to two decimal places because that's what the relay uses. And then same thing, we can do the same calculation or rather a similar calculation for the zone two element. Now that's gonna be 1.2, so 120% of the positive sequence impedance of the transmission line. So 1.2 times 0 0.854, that is equal to 1.02 ohms secondary. Now lastly, let's calculate the zero sequence compensation factor, which again, I know I've said this a couple of times, but I just wanna emphasize this. This is what the relay uses to compensate for the mole ground distance element, which is set in positive sequence terms, but of course, which we want to operate for ground faults. Now to see that calculation, let's go to the instruction manual of the SEL411L relay. And in here, I'm gonna to go to page 384. And here's the mole ground distance element section. So let me zoom in a little bit. And the zero sequence compensation factor is this K0 quantity that I have over here. So that's gonna be equal to the zero sequence impedance of the transmission line minus the positive sequence impedance, that's the term on the numerator here, divided by three times the positive sequence impedance of the transmission line. And again, this is what the rule is gonna to use to compensate for the fact that we're setting our ground distance element using the positive sequence transmission line impedance but of course, for a ground fault, there's gonna be zero sequence current flowing to the fault. All right, so again, we're gonna use this calculation over here, Z0 minus Z1 divided by three Z1. So let's go back to our notebook, and here I can calculate the zero sequence compensation factor. So that's gonna be equal to, that's called K0, and that is a phaser. That's gonna be Z0 minus Z1 divided by three Z1, where Z0 we calculated over here in secondary terms, and Z1 we calculated over here as well in secondary terms. Make sure that you don't mix and match the secondary and the primary terms. Of course, if you're gonna use secondary ohms, use the quantities in secondary ohms for both the positive sequence and the zero sequence impedances. You can also do this in primary ohms because the units are just gonna cancel out. So in here, I can calculate this. I'm just gonna plug in the values Z0 minus Z1 over 3Z1, which again are over here. And if I calculate this, I get that K0, the zero sequence compensation factor, 
is 0 0.683 at an angle of 0 0.553 degrees. And this again is unit less. All right, so now let's program this into the relay. So let's go to the settings file for the SEL411L relay. And that is this file that I have over here. Basically what I have over here are default SEL411L settings. And here, of course, there are many settings, but we're gonna focus on the settings needed to set up the Mo ground distance element. So the first thing that I need is to set up the CT ratio and the PT ratio. So if I go over here to group one, set one, and let me expand this. So group one, set one, line configuration. I'm gonna assume that for this example, we're gonna be using the W input for the CTs. So the current transformers are gonna be wired to the W input on the relay. There's two inputs over here, two sets of three phase current inputs on the 411L. Typically, if you just have one CT, you would wire that to the W terminal. So that's what I'm gonna do in this example. So CTRW, the CT ratio for the W input, that's gonna be 2000 to five, which is 400. I'm gonna leave CTRX at the default setting. That's not used. The voltage inputs, I'm gonna assume that those are gonna be wired to the Y input. So same thing, there's two inputs, two sets of three phase voltage inputs, the Y inputs and the Z inputs on the 411L relay. Typically, if you just have one set of PTs, you would wire them to the Y terminals. And again, we said that that was 230 kV divided by 115, so that gives you 2000 to one, which happens to be the default setting. And the nominal line-to-line -line voltage then for that input is gonna be 230 kV divided by 2000, which gives us 115 volts secondary. So that also matches the default setting. All right, so next let's program the positive sequence and the zero sequence impedances of the transmission line. Now Z1 mag calculated that to be 0 0.854. And here the relay is gonna round to two decimal places. The angle Z1 ang, we calculated that to be 80.8. 951 and same thing the relay rounds to two decimal places and this angle is important because it tells the relay at which angle to tilt the mo elements characteristic for both phase and ground elements so the mo circle is going to be tilted at this angle so that it lines up with the transmission line all right and then we also calculated the zero sequence impedance that was 2.605 so again the relay rounds the number to two decimal places and then the angle was 80 point nine six three degrees so now we've set the ct ratio the pt ratio and the line information now we can move into setting the ground distance elements and that you're going to find it under relay configuration and mo ground distance element reach these are the two settings that we want z1 mg and z2 mg and again these are just default settings that came with the settings file so z1 mg that was 80% of the positive sequence impedance, so that was 0 0.68. And Z2MG was 120% of the positive sequence transmission line impedance, and that was 1.02. And again, those two numbers we calculated over here. So 0.68 and 1.02. Now in this example, I'm not gonna be using the zone three element, so I can just set this to off. And now we've programmed the reaches of the zone one and the zone two Mo ground distance elements. Now we need to set the zero sequence compensation factor. So you can find that over here on the zero sequence compensation factor. And here the relay gives you an option. You can just enter auto to have the relay auto calculate what that's gonna be. And it's gonna do it based on the numbers that you enter for the positive sequence and the zero sequence impedance over here on their line configuration. So from here, it knows what the Z1 and Z0 is. So then it can just auto calculate the K0 factor from that. Now, the problem with that though, is that these numbers are rounded to two decimal places. And especially if the number is fairly low, like in this case, our positive sequence impedance is less than one ohm. Then because we're rounding to two decimal places, we're losing some accuracy by using the auto calculation. So what I'm gonna do over here then is I'm actually gonna enter this manually from our calculation over here. So 0 0.683, angle 0.553. So let's enter that over here, 0 0.683, and the angle is 0 0.553. And then the last thing that we need to do is we need to set the delays of the ground distance elements. So we can find that over here under ground distance element time delay, Zone one, again, I want that to be instantaneous. We set it to 80% of the transmission line impedance. 
So it's always going to underreach. So there's no need to delay it. Now the zone two, we set that to 120% of the transmission line impedance. So it will reach to the remote bus. So we want to add some delay so that we can coordinate with any protection at the remote substation. And I'm going to program that in this example, just to 30 cycles. That's a typical setting that gives you enough time for anything on the remote end to coordinate before we trip off. Because again, our element is going to reach and it's going to see fault at the remote substation. All right, so now we have programmed our Mo ground distance element. The last thing that we need to do, of course, is to program this into the trip equation. So if you go down here to trip logic, and here's a bunch of default settings, you can see over here that we have Z1G and Z2GT. Those are the outputs of the Mo ground distance elements. So we've configured them, we set the reach, we set the angle, we set the zero sequence compensation factor. When the measured impedance for a ground fault falls within the Mo circle of the ground distance element, then this bit for the zone one and this bit for the zone two is going to pick up. And if we program this, of course, into our trip logic, then that's going to cause a trip. Here, of course, we would have to program the output of the trip logic into an output that would then go and physically trip the breaker. So for this example, let's say that we were just doing Mo ground distance protection, then I can set this to Z1G or Z2GT. Now, in this case, for Z1G, we set the delay to zero cycles, so we can just use the Z1G element, or we can also say Z1GT. It's not gonna have an effect because the delay is zero cycles anyway. So the T at the end of the orbit means the timed out version of the element. So Z1G picks up when the impedance falls within the zone one circle, and Z1GT picks up when it times out. But of course, again, for the case of the zone one element, our delay is zero cycles, so it doesn't matter. We could just use Z1G. So I'm gonna take that off. And then again, for zone two, we do want the T at the end because we have a 30 cycle delay. And of course we talked about protective relay logic in a lot more detail in our protective relay logic online course. You can check that out if you want to learn more about relay orbits and how internal logic in SEL relays work. All right, so that's how you program a Mo ground distance element using the SEL 411L relay. Now, if you want to learn more about power system protection and control, make sure to check out our online courses where we go over these topics in much more detail. And of course, as always, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos about power system protection and power engineering. And we'll see you in the next one.